Well, hello, baseball fans, and welcome to this edition of the Paul Kino Lamar Viking Baseball Coaches Show. I'm Bill Frawley, and with me, as always, of course, is Lamar Viking Baseball Coach Paul Kino. Coach, how are you today? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. Doing well. I actually just pulled off on the side of I-35 at a nice big rest area on my, between Laredo and Waco. So you, you never know. A, it looks like you're at Cravens. And exactly. <laughs> oh, that's right. And I forgot to switch my virtual background. Hey, at least it's something on the Lamar campus. No, it right? looks good. <laughs> okay, cool. Well, it's not the Lamar Viking diamond, but it'll do. So, well, let's, let's get into some stuff here. Uh, last week, the Vikings going back, you know, we could go swept Sam Houston game one turned out to be on Wednesday night it was a close one featuring the Texans ace pitcher who did a great job on the mound. And then game two was a far more impressive win the following night. Uh, the Viking bats really came alive. What are your observations from the Sam Houston series? Well, I mean, you know, it's it's baseball. On any given night, anything can happen. I mean, I remember several, several years ago uh, playing Sam Houston. And, not, you know, I told the kids this, you know, not take Sam lightly by any means. Uh, you know, we were playing Sam Houston High School, and uh, we were down two to one in the sixth inning. Uh, we just hit balls at people all night long. They made all the plays. Um, we ended up winning the game three, two, but it, it was a nail biter. And, uh, you know, um, you know, we got rain, rain in the forecast on Wednesday and it, or Tuesday and it rains. Uh, so we ended up playing Wednesday. Uh, they like you said, their pitcher did a good job. Um, you know, the score wasn't exactly like we wanted it to be. Um, but you know, I was proud of the kids competing. Uh, we got the W, which is the most important thing. Uh, and then turned around, uh, Thursday night because it was Good Friday. We didn't play on Good Friday. Um, right. And, you know, we hit a lot better and and uh, did some things really well and, and you know, won that game handily. Well, good deal. And those are two wins you really need to get to uh, kind of keep that path towards the playoffs coming. So uh, now we're just some people where we're recording this on a Thursday night. You and I have both had some scheduling conflicts. We try to do it weekly, but here we are. So let's go back a couple of nights. So the Vikings struggled early against Arlington High on Tuesday night, tried to rally back, couldn't quite get it. Um, what can you tell us about maybe what led to the slow Lamar start and then what led to the late rally? Well, I mean, you know, we um, we actually got the first two guys on in the top of the first. Uh, I went to bunt the three-hole hitter. Um, we fouled off the pitch. You know, I made a, a decision to let him hit. He's been hot. Uh, didn't work out. He ended up getting the two strikes on him, ended up flying out. Um, we didn't, didn't end up scoring. I mean, they have a good pitcher on the mound, um, throws decently hard, probably 85, 85-ish, 86-ish maybe. Um, good changeup. He did a good job, kept us off balance. Um, you know, uh, Parker went out there. Uh, he battled. Um, they, you know, like I said, what's weird is anything can happen. You know, they yeah. came out and they were just hot. And, I mean, Parker was making good pitches. And they were just getting base hits. And then we, you know, we got forced into a couple situations. Uh, you know, the first inning, we had a ball in the dirt and we block it, but it hits the shin guard and bounces off instead of, you know, staying in front. Oh. So kid advances a base. Uh, you know, he ends up scoring if that pass ball doesn't happen or um, he doesn't score in the first inning. Um, and then um, a little later on down the line, they had first and second. It's kind of the same thing happened. Ball bounced off. We didn't keep it in front of us. We were blocking it. Um, they go second, third. We bring infield in, and they hit a pop-up, you know, but it's one of those that we're infield in, and it's about five to ten feet off the off the cut on the out, on you know, the towards the outfield, and we right. can't get back there. The outfield's playing deep. The wind's blowing out, and we can't get out there to make that play, and that scores a run. I mean, if, you know, if the ball stays in front of the catcher and they can't advance those bases, we're playing infield back, and that's that's a pop-up, and that's an out. Uh, so it's just some weird things happened. Uh, you know, I probably left Parker in there a little too long, but, you know, he's one of my dudes. He and Tucker have done yeah. it all season long. Um, you know, they've been great on the mound, uh, worked out of any problems that they've had. So I felt comfortable with him out there. I have total confidence in him. And, you know, I probably should have went and got him just a little bit earlier. But, um, you know, he battled. He did everything we, we wanted him to do. Um, you know, it's kind of a tale of, of like two, three and a half inning games. For the first three and a gotcha. half, they kind of put it on us. And then we, you know, basically we outscored them six to nothing in the last three and a half. Um, you know, I was proud of how the kids battled, uh, how they gave, how they did not give up. Because, you know, when they came in, we was 10 to one. 
I was like, guys, this is character check right here. I said, you know, you got two choices. We can battle or you can just put this, you know, let this game go. And they went after it and they battled. And, you know, in the last inning, we had first and second with one out and, you know, tie and run at the plate. So I was pleased with how we came back, you know, um, made a few mistakes that don't show up in the, in the scorebook, in the score, in the box score. But uh, other than that, I was really pleased with how uh, we played. I think you've made some really good points about battling back. And like you say, you, you talk to him for a few minutes when it's 10 to one, you say, Hey, look, character, gut check, whatever. And they decide to battle back. Didn't come up with the W, but they didn't quit either. They didn't just lay down. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Well, great. So you've had a couple of practices since then. You got uh, the Colts coming to the Lamar Viking diamond on Friday night. What's been going on in practice? Uh, how are you preparing for Friday night? Well, I mean, you know, we just continue to do our thing. I mean, you know, we're not going to freak out or anything like that. We go about our business. We go about practice like we always do, working on all the same things that we always work on. You know, two days ago was bunt coverages in first and third, communication drill where we're using pop-ups between the, the outfielders and the infielders going out, uh, just doing all the things that we cover each week so that we're sound and, and we play, we don't make mistakes. Well, I like the thing about don't panic because – the playoff picture is still in play, not to use the word kind of twice, but so, and are the, are the team leaders, are they kind of keeping an even keel? Are they not panicking as well? Oh yeah. They're, they're really confident. They feel really good, you know, about, you know, obviously we, we didn't want, we didn't want to win. Obviously. I mean, obviously we did not want to lose. <laughs> right. Um, and, you know, we didn't like the way it, it went about, you know, getting down 10 to one, but as far as, as, as playing, we feel really good about, you know, about, okay about playing well on Friday and, and having a good chance to get a, get a W. Okay. Everyone pretty healthy, strong right now. Yeah, I think so. Uh, you know, I mean, we're always getting towards the end of the season. So, um, you know, we haven't lifted in a, in a week and a half and we're kind of in the grind. And, um, you know, like I told the kids today, I said, you know, we've lifted all season. I'm not real worried about not lifting the last week and a half. You know, it's not going to mean the difference between us being losing a game or winning a game. Um, bottom line is I want my teams fresh. You know, I want them to, I want them to be energetic out there. I don't want them to feel like, Oh man, I'm so tired. Uh, so, you know, we're going to get done what we need to get done in practice and get them out of there, get them home to rest, um, and be ready to go. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, you know, you, I, I think some people, whether it's a coach, a player, a fan, someone could think, well, you didn't win. You got to practice practice. And, but you're, you're right. You don't want to wear them out and get them to where they're worn down before that next game, correct? Yes. Yeah. So, so I mean, we cover the out. things we need to cover. I mean, and it's later in the year, so you don't have to spend as much time. Like, we might have spent, you know, 10 minutes each team on bunk coverages. So, we're spending 30 minutes on bunk coverages. Obviously, teams are servicing each other. You know, like when we do bunk coverages, varsity starts out, JV runs for varsity. You know, freshman or JV2 is working bunts, offensive bunts, you know, behind us. And uh, then we rotate. So you get 10 minutes of bunt coverages, you know. But by now, I mean, this is towards the end of the year. We shouldn't have to be making sure to iron. We shouldn't be ironing out a whole bunch of things. We should have it down. So we're spending five minutes. So it's each team. So it's less, you know, trying to get them out there, trying to have a great practice, but get them out of there a little quicker and keep them fresh. Polishing up, not learning fundamentals. Correct? Exactly. Okay, good. Well, speaking of JV1 and JV2, nice segue. How are they doing? How are things looking at those levels? Uh, both of them kind of – they took in the, in the chin a little bit against Arlington High. Uh, but both are having really good seasons. I think that was the first two district losses for JV2. Um, you know, um, the JV1 did get beat by Martin. Uh, but other than that, playing both are playing really well. Uh, I'm very excited. You know, we have a lot of talent coming up through the pipeline. So I'm very, uh, very excited about it. They are all fun teams to watch, JV2, JV1, and, and a varsity. And I'm, I feel privileged the different times I get to see them. And I really miss it when I'm out of town like I have been uh, well, we miss Monday you. night, of course. We miss well, you doing, <laughs> doing the announcing. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you. It makes me feel good about it. So, But, uh, well, it, it is a lot of uh, strong – bright spots in the future and current uh, for the Lamar Viking baseball oh, yes. program. Um, well, let's go boost your club here for a few minutes. Uh, man, it's, it's just really great when we see a lot of people, not only packing the stands, but you know, Mr. Isbell, 
he he basically you know runs the concession stand mm -hmm. he even put some little signs up with qr codes on the sides of the home stands there so that people can just scan that and it'll take them to the link they can sign up to work concession stands and and just you know I, you chime in but i want to remind people how important it is to get up there especially game where you're son is not playing or grandson nephew whatever and come work the concession stand because that is such a huge part of how the booster club is successful and gets to provide things for the baseball team correct oh yes exactly but first of all before we go into that i mean i'm just sure I'm because i'm so technologically inept to have that qr code <laughs> i wouldn't know how to do any of that stuff um but uh, yeah, I mean, the Booster Club, without the Booster Club, I don't know how any sports team makes it, high school sports team. I mean, the Booster Clubs are so important. Uh, you know, the district does a great job in giving us, you know, our, our budgets and stuff, but it's never enough. It's never enough sure. to be able to do the things you want to do. And without a Booster Club that raises money to help, you know, support those kids and, and get the things you, you want to get for the kids and you would like to get them to make it a better program, uh, you can't do it without the booster club. And I have a great booster club and they've done so many things throughout the years. Um, and they're doing them this year. I mean, it's just been a fantastic year. I mean, as far as the booster club getting, doing everything, I mean, I saw them, they're putting new signs up in right field. Uh, so it was, they were putting them up today. I mean, okay. just looking awesome. I mean, and that's all because of the booster club. That's yeah, that's incredible. And, and, and there's, and I've just seen, Hey, we've had great booster clubs over the years. I've been involved for about 15 years doing announcing, broadcasting stuff, and had a couple of sons go through. And, you know, you just see sort of sometimes there's little waves of energy and, and the shooties and some other people, you know, getting the signs back in shape out in right field, doing some other things that just, you know, need just time for some things to happen. So it's just great to see that energy. Oh, it is. And, I mean, like you said, we, we need a whole bunch of people to do a, do a little instead of a, a few people doing a lot. Yes, sir. Um, you know, um, come sign up, work the concession stand, do whatever that you can do just to help this program out and help these kids out. Uh, you know, concession stand, it makes a lot of money for, for the booster club, which in turn helps buy things for these kids as far as, you know, a, a, a pitching machine or a fly ball machine or, or anything that can help us in practice, new uniforms, et cetera. Definitely. And, I mean, without the booster club, we wouldn't have all that. Definitely so. Well, let's, before we kind of gear towards closing off here in a moment, let's look at the upcoming schedule overall. So like I say, as we're recording this on a Thursday, hopefully it's posted late tonight or Friday morning, home game against the Colts on Friday evening, seven o'clock. Then is it Burleson that comes over to Lamar on Saturday yes. at noon? Yes. One game? One game. Okay. And then Monday will be the freshman home game, doubleheader. Yes. Uh, and then Tuesday will be the final home varsity pre-playoff game before south yes yeah, against south grand prairie and then we yep. go to south on friday and then we find out what the playoff picture is oh yeah i mean you know i mean i th i think the playoff picture looks really really good um good. we should I, I really feel strongly that we'll be in the playoffs um got a good group of kids they're working really hard um so i'm excited excellent well i don't mean to be looking too far ahead but there's our home schedule at least and, of course, that away game next Friday at South Grand Prairie is just as important to have people there also. Coach, what else, if anything, would you like to add before we sign off this evening? Oh, nothing. I mean, I just I, – I, I love the game. I love the kids that I get to coach. Uh, they're fantastic. You know, I was, I was joking because – I wasn't joking. I was being serious. But, uh, you know, Tucker was walking into the field today, and I was all, I was all excited, you know. And I was just – I said, man, this is my favorite part of the day. I, I love – I get to see my boys. You know, I get to I get to work work with my kids. You know, I mean, I don't have any boys. I have four daughters, and they're all kind of like I've told them before. They're all kind of like my sons, and you know, I love them, and I love being out at practice every single day with them. You know, speaking of that kind of thing, you just put a thought in my head. Saturday, my brother in law, uh, my sister's husband, is going to come over and do color commentary for the varsity broadcast. Oh, awesome! And he, yeah, 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 he used to help me out quite a bit, football and baseball. He's just had job conflicts uh, lately, but he's going to be able to come over. He has two daughters. He has lived kind of vicariously through my sons and loves the baseball stuff. And he's looking forward to being over uh, at the Lamar Viking Diamond on That's Saturday awesome. as well. So I can I have two sons, but I can relate a little bit to what you're talking about. You, you only have daughters and you love anything to do with baseball and the guys. So mm -hmm. good stuff. All right. 
one more last call. Anything else to add? No, that's it. Okay. Well, until next time, I'm Bill Frawley with head Viking baseball coach Paul Kino saying VFND.